What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mike Dyack. I'm a master plumber and HVAC contractor. Today, this morning, we are in Manhattan. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are in New York City. We have a modern Greek restaurant right across the street from here. We have some condensate drain issues on the two, not one, but two A.O. Smith Cyclone gas-fired condensing water heaters. These are big, massive boys. Matter of fact, in order to get them all the way up to the top of this six-story building, you would think, you would think that the plumber would take care of it. Actually, it's not the case. Here in New York City, when you have to move something that big, you hire a moving company. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you hire a moving company and then you put in the $30,000 water heater. That's each installed. Anyway, we have some condensate drain issues here. Um, I always been saying this, I've been saying this for quite a while. I've been saying this for quite a while and that is hacks bring me stacks. And I don't just mean me, I mean everyone in the trade. So you know, if you're a hack, um, professionals are gonna make stacks off of you. Um, so thank you, Hex, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I appreciate that. All right, let's begin our trek. We have several floors to scale up here in this building. We have to go all the way up. And unfortunately, there's no elevator that brings us to where we need to go. So right now we're taking the service staircase. This is the staircase where the authorized personnel access to scale the floors here. God, I can't imagine being a New York City firefighter right now, climbing stairs. Not so bad though, huh? All right. So we got these two A.O. Smith Condensing gas, water heaters. We were here um, about two weeks ago doing full service on both of them. <laughs> God, you should really check out the video. Full disassembly of the burner assembly and even testing the micro amps of the flame current. Great knowledgeable video in case you guys don't know. I'll put a link up there. So anyway, today, we're gonna make these things a little more environmentally friendly. And why I say that, I say that because, see all this water on the floor? Well, it looks like water and it's not. It's actually a liquefied version of the condensate, or sorry, it's a liquefied version of the combustion gases that are in a vapor state as they're leaving, you know, up, all right? This is a liquid version of those combustion gases that were once a vapor, but as it cooled, it turned into this condensate. Now this condensate, it's no good. It's bad for your drain pipes. It's bad for the environment and left untreated, can have a lot of ill effects. So if you continue watching, I'm gonna show you how we make this installation whole and make it better for the environment. I'm also gonna be speaking about why this condensate or this liquid form of condens or condensed, <laughs> or why the liquid form of combustion gases in a vapor form are bad for the environment. So smash that thumbs up button in advance. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. There's zero cost or obligation. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to get post notifications when I drop a video to the Mikey Pipes Pipe Doctor Home Services YouTube channel, which is usually every day with the exception of Friday night. We have now what we call this high efficiency revolution. And as these high efficiency appliances, as they become more, I guess, reliable and affordable uh, and more professionals in the trades are uh, becoming familiar with them, 
they have uh, rapidly been adopted as, to some, the preferred option for heating uh, in a residential and uh, commercial applications. These boilers, furnaces, water heaters, you know, they can lower energy consumption and thus your energy bills. But they come with an added, I guess, gift that keeps on giving. Uh, and that is, uh, there is a very acidic byproduct that's left over. Uh, and if left untreated, it's not good, you know? Uh, it can corrode the building's foundation, the flooring, drainage systems, your water treatment systems with this, you know, very acidic byproduct, which we call condensate. Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, we can add a condensate neutralizer and this very acidic condensate, which kind of looks like water, but you should never drink it. <laughs> and don't let any living creature drink it either because it's, it's, you know, it's very acidic. It has a, you know, the pH that should not reach 6.5 or higher. So this condensate tends to be acidic, uh, layman's terms because of the heat of the gas burner. Uh, it's called that simple, and the reaction to the heat of the, of the gas burner, whether it's natural gas or propane. You know, if you have a home with a septic tank, the condensate waste uh, can also destroy the good bacteria that is essential for keeping you, your septic system operating properly. The mechanical codes, the plumbing codes all state that you need to deal with proper discharge of condensate. So here we are at this Greek modern restaurant on East 51st Street. And you know what? The building owner has been concerned and the proprietor of the business has been concerned about why there's so much water on the floor. And that's because the metal piping that was used to connect to the bottom of the condensate trap on the bottom of each unit rotted away. So here we are, we're gonna make it right. All right, so I'm starting to cut away the, the half inch copper that they used for the drain on this first unit. But let's just take a look at the pieces that they made this work with. So there's a piece of copper that went into that drain there but a trap came across and now look it went into this floor drain and look how deteriorated the floor drain is uh, that's not cut by the way it looks like it's cut but it's not it's actually eaten away by the condensate it's crazy it's literally crazy so we're gonna rip all this stuff out and do it the right way they had at one point of the life a condensate pump there there's the drain and there's the plug so Let's put it back the way it was and the way that the New York City Building Department approved it, you know, years ago. All right, step one, I removed the existing improperly installed condensate drain piping. I installed a three quarter by half inch PVC by female. This is what I had in the truck. And then I had these short little plastic nipples. Uh, that come with one of the air handlers. I, I threw them into my <laughs> into my PVC bin and I had that. So I have a short little PVC nipple right there, a half inch, and I have the three quarter by half inch PVC by female reducing coupling. I have one here and I got one there. I took the Liberty and already mounted the Little Giant. Uh, this is the 110 volt model, uh, condensate removal pump. I took a couple screws it says my flow is not level right there so I put a screw on the left and right hand side um, fortunately there was some blocking behind there behind the sheetrock so we we're good then I took my condensate neutralizer threw my branding sticker on it so they know who put it in and I screwed that to the wall uh, it comes with the included unions right there and those two male adapters for both inlet and outlet throw a little 45 with a 90 and then that piece going into the condensate pump I cut it on a little bit of a slit so if it should ever drop in it's not going to interfere with drainage next we're going to tie in this one and this one together and then go into our inlet side of our neutralizer all right we are all tied in let me show you what I did and I always say plumbing and trades 
mechanical side of things, you know, it's all like a, a work of art. You know, every artist will draw it a little differently. And even, you know, every artist will make a slight change, you know, in the next piece of art. So your mileage may vary, as they say. So on my inlet side, coming out of, going into my neutralizer, I ran about, uh, I would say about 24 inches of three quarter inch uh, PVC. Put an elbow on there. Um, I was thinking about securing something to the to the wall right there, but um, you know, I looked at the, I know the code and we're good. Um, I have good pitch right here. I got great pitch there. Um, coming out of the condensate trap on my right water heater, um, I threw on that PVC by female adapter. I immediately went to a 90 pointing down and then I added a T. Um, and before the T, going towards the condensate neutralizer, I have a little piece of nipple right there and an elbow. Uh, coming across to uh, start our descent of the condensate that the condensate is gonna travel with. The condensate's gonna travel with, I sound like an idiot. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning, how about that? Here we go, we have this A.O. Smith, BTH 300-200. This is a big mother effer. This is 300,000 BTU gas-fired condensing water heater with a recovery rate of 349 gallons per hour. This bad boy is massive. It's also from 2015. Coming out of the condensate, on the one on my left, I threw on a 45. Ran a little piece of three-quarter inch PVC. I added a T. Now, this T is for two reasons. Number one, I'm a plumber. I think like a plumber. Master plumber, nonetheless. And I know that when water goes down a drain, air needs to replace it. So, venting. I threw on a T there, but that's the first purpose. The second purpose is, if my condensate pump should fail, if my condensate neutralizer should get clogged, at least the water has somewhere to go. And it really, I don't think it should prevent operation of the water heater. So uh, that's my take on things, right? So if the condensate drain should clog, right? Let's say there was no water heater, there was no T there. If this drain line should clog, we're going to get an error with no um, ignition, right? Because uh, our condensate is clogged. There's no way for the condensate to go. It's sitting at the bottom of the water heater, at the bottom of the combustion chamber, and it can't get out. The exhaust gas can't get out. It's going to prevent operation of ignition. So if there's a means for it to get out, like that T right there, right? At least the, water, the, the restaurant will not be shut down. You know, they'll see water on the floor. Okay, it's a problem. We can take care of it. It's not an emergency. It's an urgency. So I threw on that T there. Let's call it a vent T, all right? And also an emergency drain should something clog up down the line. There was a piece of Kindorf here. I didn't have any in my truck. I didn't want to recycle what was here. But I also wanted to give it a little bit of support there. Even though we don't need it, I wanted to give it a little bit of support there. So I put a piece of Kindorf that was resting on the floor. And I threw on a Kindorf clamp there, Unistruck clamp. Coming across, there's that T picking up that water heater. Going across here. And voila, to the neutralizer and the condensate pump. And just in case you guys are sitting in your parents' basement, in your sister's underwear, and you're wondering, Mikey Bibes is not, is not pitched correctly. Well, here's my torpedo, and let me show you. Because this is for you trolls out there. And I know you get off on it, and that's why I will continue to talk about it. So I thank you for your support, Mr. and Mrs. Troll. Um, by you watching my channel and, and engaging in the comments section down below, it for, strengthens the video and the channel. So thank you. Kisses. No homo. Look at that. Flying pitch. See? Flying pitch. Have it over here. Flying pitch. Have it over here. Flying pitch. Have it over here. Ooh. Ooh. That's good. See? That's good. You know what? Look at this. There's not really much play there. It's solid. It's not going anywhere. And just in case you were wondering, let's take off this condensate cap on the trap. You see? It's clean. I just took this apart maybe two weeks ago. Okay? I cleaned it. 
not the best of shape, but nothing wrong with it. It's intact. All right, so let's talk about maintenance. Now, you have this, now you have high efficiency heating or water heating equipment in your home or building, your office. Um, you know what? I get it. Out of sight, out of mind. You know what? If it works, if it's not broken, don't fix it. All right? Uh, but let's get the legalities out of the way. Right? You should monitor the condensate neutralizer for cleanliness, uh, the level of the neutralizer media in the canister, and also the pH level of the discharge on a monthly basis. That's what it says in the manual that comes with these condensate neutralizer um, canisters, you know, the condensate neutralizer removal pumps, things like that. Um, is anyone gonna check up monthly? I highly doubt it, but it is recommended, right? Uh, the media should be changed once a year or, right, uh, when it, the pH level drops below the minimum level of the authority having jurisdiction. Yep, <laughs> yeah, I said it. So whatever your local code states, when the pH level drops below that minimum level, or once a year, whichever comes first, replace the condensate media that's inside that condensate neutralizer. Right? We're only trying to do our part to help keep our planet and the piping in your building, your home, your office uh, intact. Because let me tell you something, that condensate is acid, it will eat through your piping. And you know, paying a plumber or you know, buying the media to do it yourself is much cheaper than repiping your home or your building. Facts. So if you are in the New York, Long Island metropolitan area and you would like us to service your home or your property, give me a call at 516-348-6300. If you're in the central Florida, Orlando area and you need a great plumber or HVAC uh, contractor, give me a call at 407-375-1100. My name is Mike Dyack. It's been a pleasure recording this video to hopefully you can learn something new every day. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe. And just real quick, uh, what, I, what I like to do for some special equipment that's out there or to help strengthen and develop the relationships that we have, Pipe Doctor has with our clients, and when we come across equipment like this uh, and they're fed up with the previous contractors, many times our clients have fired you know, dozens of contractors before, but I print out the service manual for the equipment that's in their home or their building. Uh, so here is the manuals for the Series 200 and the Series 300 that are behind me. And I write down on there or somewhere nearby a service history. So on 2-13-2024, we did a full service. And today, 2-22-24, we did condensate removal install. Helps build value, but also helps the next guy out who may not be you, unfortunately. It happens, right? Um, but it may not it may not be you, it'll be the next guy, and at least, you know what? There I am, and they're gonna know that, hey, you know, Pipe Doctor was here, and you know, he did a solid, thank you. And little things like that really will allow us in the trades to make the trades great again. Now, have a great day.